Hi, my name is Chrissy, and I'm an IIAU. Don't panic, I'm not contagious, and I am coping with it. But I can't guarantee that some of you won't leave here today also believing that you too are an IIAU. That's right, I'm talking about introvert in an extrovert world. Or for me, more precisely, an ISFJ-A. This is a personality test from Myers-Briggs that I had to complete a few months ago for a new team that I was joining. Turns out I'm the only introvert in a team of extroverts. So I started thinking about what differences I would be bringing to that team. Before I go any further though, I want to clarify a few things. In real simple terms, introverts feel just right in less stimulating environments. Extroverts, on the other hand, are energized by social situations. And then there are those people who feel just right in either. They're ambiverts. And yes, that's a real word. Introversion is not something to overcome. It's a personality trait, and it's a core part of who we are. As an IIAU, I like to think before I speak. And just because I'm quiet doesn't mean I don't have anything to contribute. I take a more deliberate approach to risk. My energy comes from things that I am really interested in and those that I can focus on. I am not shy. There seems to be this misconception that shyness and introversion are the same things. They are not. Sure, there can be some shy people who are also introverts. I prefer a glass of wine with a few friends as opposed to a party full of strangers. That's why I wasn't at the social last night, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not antisocial, I'm differently social. In the classroom, noise and chaos overwhelm me, but I do believe that they're both important in the learning process. I eat my lunch at my desk, not because I don't like the staff room or the people in it, it's just that this is my space where I can re-energize. This is me after 40 minutes in the school cafeteria with 50 odd third graders on a Friday, second half of lunch. 40 minutes felt like 40 years with the white, bright, noisy, chaotic room called the cafeteria. And I found it extremely hard to be ready to go back into the classroom, switched on for learning. So what does this mean for student learning, especially our students who may also be introverts? Here are some ways, some intentional ways that we can go about balancing this out. Every room's got nooks and crannies and reading corners, and that's great for all kids. But think about creating an outdoor quiet zone where introvert kids can go to find other kids who are also interested in quiet play. Use a buddy system. A familiar face in an overwhelming or chaotic activity can make a huge difference. Introvert kids tend to speak up when they're encouraged to talk about their interests. Provide work alone together time. That simple 10 minute time that you can silent read or quietly chill after coming in from recess or even after a chaotic activity 
also can make a world of difference. Redefine participation. Can students participate in your class without speaking out loud? Do your students have a responsibility to contribute to the silence of the classroom so that others can talk? And is it possible for silence to be a useful contribution to participation in your classroom? And last but not least, keep leveraging that technology. That process allows students, especially introvert students, to connect, communicate, collaborate, process, all with a built-in ability to have that think time before they respond. These aren't new strategies. And I'm sure that you are already, whoops, broke the clicker. I'm sure that you are already doing many of these things, but you may not be doing them deliberately and intentionally. And I ask that you deliberately and intentionally do some of these strategies and make sure that they're in place so that you can rethink what you understand about student silences to change your understanding of participation so that you can disrupt the extrovert dominated world that is education. Thank you. <laughs>